Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here. On this episode, we're going to be making an anvil from a railroad track. It's how I got started in blacksmithing, and we want to help show you the ways that you can get into this craft too. We've recently just opened pre-orders on the 140 pound steel anvil. We're also selling these beautiful Montana made anvil stands. But here's the thing, we understand not everybody's up for spending 1400 bucks on an anvil, but we want to show how you can get into this craft and get stuck in spending less. So let's pull out this bit of railroad track and see what we're working with. A viewer bought this piece of railroad track at a scrap yard. They wanted to make an anvil out of it. They never got around to it, so they gave it to us. Let's make a plan. Big hunk of metal like this, quite daunting. How can you cut something so large with minimal tools? The easiest way, of course, is gonna be a bandsaw with a nice sharp blade and plenty of coolant. That would cut through it in no time. But that bandsaw was about $1,000 used, and I know that not everybody has a bandsaw. They're expensive, they take up a lot of space. What else could you do? An oxypropane cutting torch would also cut it, no problem. But those bottles, the cart, the torch, all of that, that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. That's probably a thousand dollars in that setup. So not everybody's got that. And you've got to know how to use the oxyfuel cutting torch. I don't even know how to use an oxyfuel cutting torch that well, and I've had one for a long time. So, what else can you do? Well, you could do what I'm going to do, which is I'm going to take an angle grinder to it. Not a small four and a half inch one, you're going to use a big boy. So usually on the nine inch angle grinder, we're running a Cubitron grinding disc for stripping forge scale off Damascus billets. We actually stock these best grinding discs that we've found. We're now going to be using a cutting disc, so it's an eighth inch thick, and that extra diameter of the nine inch grinder, as well as that extra torque that the machine has, is hopefully going to make short work of this. Key things to think of, this grinder is monstrous, it's huge! It has so much power, the blades have so much inertia, you can kick it out of your hand, that wheel's going to be spinning for a long time, you could take off a leg, cut your femoral artery, have a really bad day, safety is Number one, don't do stupid stuff with angle grinders. No, nope, don't wanna do it. The safety first, these tools can kill you. I'm gonna be cutting the whole way around, around all my lines, trying to minimize my surface area contact. Let's get to it. We're gonna come over here and ask Zach. Angle grinder injuries, you've done some research on this. What's the what's the scoop? What happens? How many of them are there? Uh, roughly 5,000 a year on average. Uh, generally about half of those happen at home, so it's somebody working at an at-home project. Um, another general characteristic is that they're uh, older, retired folks who have previous experience or use, they're familiar with uh, an angle grinder. And uh, injuries usually happen to the face and the upper trunk due to kickback, especially when somebody takes the guard off of it and it just uh, comes back and whacks you. Yeah, that's not good. No. That's no. not good. But that's really interesting. I didn't know. About half of them are people at home who've already used an angle grinder. Mm -hmm. And I guess that shows. Mm -hmm. You get careless, you use it at home, you've already used it. Just because you've got experience doesn't mean you can't get hurt. So, safety first. Thanks, Zach. Let's get back to it.
Do you need to do this to your railroad track to be able to have an anvil? No, you don't. You can just get a bit of railroad track and start hammering. The first railroad track anvil I hammered on didn't have any grinding done to it whatsoever. Bit of torch cut railroad track, kind of given to me by the folks at Holcomb Forge, who are in fact the people who first ever got me into blacksmithing, way back when I was 11. But if you don't grind on the thing, you don't make it look like an awesome little mini anvil. How cool is that? That is a railroad track anvil that frankly is completely functional. It has a horn in it, which means that you can really make whatever you want. The only thing it's lacking is a hardy hole, but a little bit of creativity could solve that. Bits of railroad track are readily available, not on the railway line. You can't take stuff from the railway line, that's illegal, but in scrapyards all over the world. And it's a nice hefty chunk of medium carbon steel that will make a great anvil surface. And many a blacksmithing or bladesmithing career has been started on one of these. This is a railroad track anvil, and you don't need anything more to make beautiful work. Recently, of course, you'll remember we just finished up the four weeks of forging, and that was so exciting to see how many of you guys got into your shops and made stuff, made the projects that we wanted you guys to make. And the last week of four weeks of forging, where people make axes, and we're going to announce the winners. They've already been announced on the Alex Steel Co. Instagram. First place is Cardman625, who is getting a custom Damascus billet that Will made up. The thing looks beautiful. Second place winner is KGB1984 with this lovely hatchet. They are getting a self-save kit. In third place is Rory Lindahl getting an ankle medical kit. And our random winner is the Woodland Forge. This is also just a very lovely axe. A whole bunch of you folks made it. Just incredible pieces of work. And the Woodland Forge is getting the axe that we made at the end of the four weeks of forging. Thank you all so much for participating in the four weeks of forging. It was just so much fun to get so many of you working on these projects. Get, see that you folks are getting out in your workshops and making things. Thank you folks for watching this video. Getting started in blacksmithing doesn't need to be complex. The pre-orders on these anvils are ending on Friday this week. So get them while you can. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed. We always love seeing the work that you guys come up with when you post on Instagram and you tag the Alex Steel Co. See you very soon. Bye-bye.